Hello and welcome everyone. I am so glad today to be joined with Ben Baker here. Everybody knows Ben's mama. She's a regular here on TV 35. Uh, we were cutting up off camera last time your mama was on. I called her the wrong name. Now, how does that happen? <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm Ben. So. Yeah, I got that name right. Ben Baker running for county commissioner in District 3 and... Mm -hmm. uh, uh, you're a newcomer to politics, and uh, you work out at YKK, a beautiful family. And first of all, I, I talked about your mom and, of course, your daddy, Kenny Baker, but tell right. me more about your family. Well, you know, I, I was born and raised here in Lawrence County. Uh, yeah, I'll be 39 this year, knocking on 40. And, of course, like you said, my mom and dad are Kenny and Patsy Baker. Uh, Kenny, as most folks know, and this was kind of my introduction into politics, and, and the good stuff. Uh, he, he, he served on city council for years, you oh, know, yeah. when I was growing up, and I remember laying on the floor in the house in our study, you know, Mom, every time there was a council meeting, she was listening to the radio. So, I, I, it, you know, the local politics has been around me for a while, so I, it's not necessarily new. Now, stepping into that role is something that will be new for me. Uh, and then Mom, of course, is uh, she's always been over the Keep Double Lawrence Beautiful, which mm -hmm. is a a fantastic organization. I think uh, sometimes people don't really realize the important role that that plays when industry comes and they actually see our community because you got you know one time to make that first impression mm -hmm. and when they come through and they see that the trash is picked up you know and, and not just from that angle but she does a great job I thought and, and our community does on promoting education mm -hmm. on environmental issues and green initiatives Work, working with the corporate yeah. folks and the industries and schools I mean and you can really tell that and I think it comes across that way with folks uh, well, look at our community, Ben. Yeah. Look at, we travel around. That's we right. have a beautiful downtown community. So many people involved cleaning up the old homes in some of the That's neighborhoods. Right. That's uh, right. Well, this weekend we're doing the recycling. Got the shredding company coming mm -hmm. back. You know, things like that that we don't really think of, but uh, keep Dublin Lawrence beautiful plays a very important role. Uh, absolutely, especially in the quality of life when they come in. Like I said, it's the impression they get when they look at you, like how you're dressed or mm -hmm. when you meet someone for the first time. So, uh, and I've got two sisters, uh, Jennifer Baker, who's now Jennifer King. Uh, she lives in Lawrence County as well. Uh, her husband's self-employed. And then, of course, I've got Audrey Baker, who's Audrey Hogan, <laughs> who most folks know through Mellon Moore. She's the owner of Mellon Moore. And, and if you don't know her by name, most people just say the little brown-haired girl that's real nice. <laughs> you know, and, uh, but that's her, and she's done her well. She also serves, uh, I think, this term on the board with the Chamber of Commerce. Uh, she's been involved with the service league and some other things, so she's actually involved with the community as well. Mm -hmm. uh, now, my, my family personally, uh, my wife, Joy Baker, who is a, a very beautiful and supportive woman. Uh, she is the anchor for me. She helps keep me grounded. Uh, I've got two beautiful children, Cam, who will be five this year, Abby will be two. And, uh, you know, they're growing in those little, they're that age, they got that personality, you know, and just watching them interact, I mean, it's hilarious. And uh, needless to say, there's never a, a dull moment at the oh, Baker I House. Bet. I bet. And she's uh, a school teacher. And she is a school teacher. Joy teaches uh, with the Lawrence County School System at East Lawrence Middle. Uh, where recently she she did get the teacher of the year, mm -hmm. so That's right. uh, you know she's a she's a really she's the type of teacher that we need to be honest with you. She pours her heart into that. And Ben, I know your faith is important to you. Tell me about that. I grew up here uh, Methodist, of course, uh, at First United Methodist Church. Uh, my wife from Camilla, Georgia, uh, she grew up Baptist. So need to say, now that we're married, I go to Marie Baptist Church, <laughs> <laughs> or Mary, as anybody might, as some folks may say. But, uh, you know, while there, you know, over the past 10 years or so, I've, uh, I've taught an adult Sunday school class for four or five years. Uh, I've taught a, a children's Sunday school class for a couple of years. I was director of the men's ministry, served on church council. You know, a lot of things, because I truly believe you've got to give back. You know, you've got to be involved. If you're going to be associated, you're going to be a member, you're going to be a citizen, you need to give back. Uh, my wife also, uh, she's active as well. Uh, she was on the Youth Pastor Search Committee, and, and she's fixing to uh, volunteer with the Vacation Bible School, of course. That's a big job. Yes, it's has a, has a huge <laughs> job. And oftentimes those are the ones where you really need the most help. I mean, a lot has to take place to make that happen. Uh, but we've got a great church. Marie's a great church. got great people there. I'm uh, really excited about that. Um, well, that probably comes natural because growing up in the household that we both did, mm -hmm. uh, volunteering in the community, that was just a, a way right. of life. I mean, you, you want to make your community better, and I know that's what your parents taught you early on. Of course, you work out at YKK, and you've got some good experience in manufacturing. What do you think about that? Uh, talking about the recent jobs coming in, do you think that'll give you a leg up being a county commissioner and having that background in manufacturing and being able to talk to them on a different level? Yeah, I, I think that's important, but I want to back up just a little bit and kind of 
with the because I think you can't separate or we shouldn't separate our faith from our public service. And and what I mean by that was, you know, you always hear folks talk about, you know, the nation needs to turn back to God and a lot of our problems revolve that the nation is not turning to God. And I heard a pastor, I was knocking on doors while I've been out campaigning and and a man told me and I won't mention his name because I know he wouldn't want credit for mm-hmm. it. But uh but he said that it's it, the nation doesn't need to turn back to God. And it kinda caught me off guard. And basically basically what he said is you know, we, as society as a whole, we've lost pub, uh, personal accountability, you know. And so we group ourselves to say, we need to turn back to God. Because it's much harder to say, I need to turn back to God. And that's mm-hmm. where the change needs to happen. Amen, brother. You know, me or you, it's individuals that make the change. Mm-hmm. And if we do that, but now to look at yourself introspectively like that, you have to have some sense of humility to be humble. And to do that type of anal- analysis or to look at yourself in that light, you have to have a standard. Measure yourself against a standard. For me, my standard is Jesus Christ. I measure myself against Christ. And therefore, I can. It, it, what it reveals to me is that I'm not perfect. Uh, you know, you're not perfect. We're not perfect. Mm-hmm. And I think as a public service leader, when Christ came, he came to serve first. He came to serve people. And I think a lot of our leaders have lost their priorities and they try to lead before they serve, because you don't, you can't truly lead people until you understand them, and when you when you humble yourself and you become a, a people, you know, people do business with people, mm-hmm. and I think that allows you to effectively understand and represent them pro- appropriately. So you have to serve first, right? That's what a servant lead. is, and then lead. Yeah. But now going back to your manufacturing question, to kind of tie that in, you also you can't dis- you know disconnect them. The two are together. together, so you have to be able to lead too. And mentioning the manufacturing. I've got, you know, 13 years of experience uh, in the industry, specifically in manufacturing and distribution and logistics. I've got a master's degree in logistics administration. Uh, I'm a member of several professional organizations. And and in my job, in my role with supply chain management at YKK, uh, we're tasked, we were pulled out of the company to kind of task as managers who have to look across the entire enterprise. So any one particular project, I can't silo manage. Mm-hmm. You have to. I might be working on a project with IT, accounting, you know, sales operations. So you have to be able to work cross functionally mm-hmm. with many people, personalities, and gain consensus, develop a plan, and then be able to lead that initiative and implement it. So all those, I think, are factors that yes, a hundred percent. Would that be valuable to Lawrence County to have that type of experience and leadership at the commissioner's level? I think yes, and. That's kind of my goal. I think we need to elevate the county commissioner's position to become more directly integrated with the development authority, with economic development. Uh, at the end of the day, the commissioners are the one that have to, you know, pass the law or, or give the authority to on taxes and different decisions. So I think not only could it be an asset from the development authority to have someone like that on the board, but for manufacturers when they come in. And they see that they have someone that understands them, can speak their language. Yeah, that's a tremendous asset. Uh, And then more importantly, I'll tell you, um, another side of that coin regarding the development authority is you've also got somebody on the board of commissioners that can hold them accountable. Mm -hmm. You know, we need jobs, no doubt about it. But we need to be sure that we're investing in the right jobs, in the right industry. Mm -hmm. And so I think that kind of pulls the whole, closes the loop there. You've got the leadership from the uh, everyday world there with myself being in the, uh, in the trenches every day, and you've got that on your board when these industries come in. They see that. And then the Development Authority now has another, another tool in their toolbox. Right. Uh, so I think if we all pull that together and we collectively use those resources, and, and if the voters, if that's what they're looking for, mm-hmm. is for someone who wants to serve, who has the heart to serve, the desire to serve, and then lead and has the qualities to lead, then I think there's absolutely no doubt in my mind that they need to be a Baker backer and vote Ben Baker in July. Do you really think, of course, living in the South, we grew up conservative uh, people, do you think people are really looking for more conservative values? Oh, absolutely. Nowadays, more than any. And I'll tell you, I just served as a delegate for the uh, Republican Party in Columbus uh, for the state convention. And there's a lot of sentiment, and I know we can't get into it now, but there's several things on the ballot, particularly that hopefully that we'll address on the debate that are coming up in July that mm-hmm. we'll be voting on. And I think what folks will see during that debate is there's going to be a clear choice on values. Uh, I believe you can grow jobs without growing taxes. 
those sorts of principles. Mm -hmm. Cut taxes, cut spending, eliminate regulations. You know, those are reforms, and House Bill 386 that the, that the state just passed was a wonderful step forward in tax reform where they eliminated sales tax on manufacturers' uh, energy cons consumption. Right which is one of their largest costs. That's how you get jobs. That's how you get manufacturers. And when they come, they bring construction. When the construction leaves, you're left with jobs, sales tax, revenues. Those revenues go to infrastructure, other things and services that the county needs. So that's, that's, we do need those values, and that's what I stand for. And working with other people, what's your relationship? Let's talk about Matt Hatchett, our legislator, Senator Tollison, our senator here in our area. Uh, what kind of working relationship there? In, in terms of being able to work with them and county commission. Oh, I, I look forward to it. Look, mm -hmm. I mean, uh, I, you hate to say, you know, you love this, yeah. you love politics because <laughs> people think you're crazy. Yeah. You know, ain't that the truth? <laughs> you know, a lot of folks say, why in the world do you, would you want to get into public service? You know, and, and I think you do have to have a heart for it. And and I keep up on politics at the national level, at the state level. Uh, and I would love the opportunity mm -hmm. to be able to join with them. Uh, like I talked about House Bill 386. I mean, there's a lot of things that we're doing, you know, in terms of uh, online sales, you mm -hmm. know, taxing those folks, putting Georgia on a more competitive playing field. And I think the counties do need to have that connection with the state folks as well as the, you know, the folks in Washington. So, yeah, I look forward to that. Okay, before we go, uh, you know, we grew up here. A lot of people here now, we were growing up, we knew most everybody here. We ain't like that anymore. <laughs> we've really grown. We may still be a small town, but we've grown since we were young. Let's talk to the people maybe just moving in here, don't know Ben Baker, don't know what we're talking about here. Why should they vote for you over your opponent? Well, I think we've kind of hit on this, uh, many of the points, but one is, is definitely, you know, uh, I am a, a, fa a family guy, you know. Uh, I was born and raised here too, local boy. Uh, but more importantly though, and it goes back to serving, I think you have to have a heart and you have to have your priorities right to be able to be effective at this job. Uh, you do have to first listen to the people. You have to be able to hear their needs. That way you can properly represent them. Mm -hmm. But you do have to have the leadership capabilities. And I think my manufacturing background and my education and things that we've talked about absolutely uh, would bring, be a huge asset to this community in terms of serving on the Board of Commissioners, helping the Development Authority, and attracting business, knowing that they've got somebody that understands them. Uh, and that's, that's really, I think, what's in the end and the conservative values I think in the end are going to be what separates me from my opponent. Good. Thank you, brother. Appreciate yes, you sir. coming. No problem. Thank you very much. And you heard him a while ago. I tried to say it fast three times. Be a Baker backer. <laughs> well, my wife came time. up with that slogan. <laughs> i got to give her credit. She did good. Yeah. You tell the school teacher there. She's, just, she's a great asset That's for right. you. Beautiful family. Great family there. And before we go, if anybody wants to talk to you, Ben, wants to help with your campaign, put a sign in the yard, whatever, tell them how to get a hold to you, and we'll put it right there on the screen for them. Uh, my cell number, which you can call me anytime, is 478-278-2301. Or you can go by Mellonmore anytime and talk with Audrey, you know, and she can put me in touch with you. Uh, you know, if you need yard signs or you want to give money or whatever, uh, we would appreciate any support we have. And again, hopefully, uh, with some of the things we've discussed, that uh, if that's the type of leadership you're looking for, that you will be a Baker Backer and vote <laughs> Ben Baker in July. Good job. And also, go on Facebook. Uh, I like your Facebook page <laughs> because. You, you keep everybody up to date. So That's if right. you want to follow Ben through the election cycle, uh, pretty well every day. I, I go on every day and watch what you're doing, but you, you're pretty good at that uh, social networking, which is important this day and time, uh, isn't it? Well, and that's part of it, too, is, you know, today's world's changing, and, and I think that's why it's important to get younger leadership mm -hmm. because things are evolving. Uh, the business climate's different, and, and nowadays technology changes so rapidly. If you're not in it like I am every day, and like these other folks, then you can get kind of behind the eight Amen, ball. Amen, brother. So uh, <laughs> social networking by far has become a very, a very big tool. Yep. It's all on the screen right there. Just contact Ben. He'll be glad to talk with you. We appreciate you joining us. We'll be back right after this.